Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now let's go back in history uh, all the way to 1971. Uh, we're going to be talking of uh, a woman uh, who on this day uh, was convicted of killing her husband. It was what is, was described as the first internet murder. Uh, she was born, actually she was born in 1971, but this happened in 1999. Her name Shari Paulette Kitley Miller. Um, who was an American woman convicted of plotting the murder of her husband, Bruce Miller, over the internet with her online lover by the name Jerry Cassidy. He eventually committed suicide. Um, Bruce Miller was found dead in his junkyard in Flint, Michigan, on November 8, 1999, killed by a 20-gauge shotgun. According to the prosecution, she wanted Bruce dead for his money, and the divorce wouldn't have given her enough of the money so it would have been better if it was dead so she you know gets more of it and so she uh, plotted with her online lover jerry cassidy uh, to kill her husband <laughs> on this day in 1999 the trial made national headlines and miller's life was profiled on a and &E american justice uh, after she was arrested in february 2000 she was held without bail until her trial uh, the jury then found her guilty on all charges. And while in prison, she was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and other mental illnesses. She eventually claimed um, that she wanted to give back to the people that she has selfishly taken from. And, um, you know, in a, a book that she wrote a couple of years later while in prison, she confessed to the murder of her husband and, of course, gave further details of how she plotted it with her online boyfriend, stroke lover, Jerry Cassidy. This happened in 1999 on the 8th of uh, November. And that's, of course, is our uh, story in history for today. We'll move away from there now, move to our first major conversation for today, and that is in Anambra State, where the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared the elections inconclusive um, as a result of a failure of elections in Ihiala local government area. It says that uh, the number of um, your voters, uh, the difference between the APGA and PDP candidates um, is uh, less than the number of registered voters in Ihiala. And of course, INEC has the uh, right as a body to declare the elections inconclusive. There will be supplementary elections on Tuesday, the 9th of uh, November. We're speaking this morning with um, Mr. Uche Okoye, who's uh, the MD Trunk Digital Media and Convener of Teta Movement. Good morning, Mr. Okoye. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. All right, let's, of course, bring you in first on your reactions to the way the Anambra elections turned out. Um, for a few, they may have expected things to turn out this way, but for others, maybe surprising. Uh, but what side are you on? Did you, are you shocked at the way it turned out? Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, first, I want to congratulate Danambra for coming out to conduct themselves uh, appropriately and, of course, as have their, um, their turn to elect who governs them in the next four years. It is very important. It is constitutionally enshrined, um, fundamentally, uh, our right to exercise our franchise. And um, towards the build up, towards the election, uh, we had a lot of hiccups. We had a lot of insecurity issues, um, which you know disturbed even the campaign process. And as for, at some point, a lot of people felt that the election would be postponed. Um, we we are so uncertain about the you know the outcome of the of the election, and uh, we had IPOB from the other side saying there will not be election um, already. You know, uh, stating that there will be sit at home from the fifth of November till the end of that election. And we, we had a lot of insecurity issues, and people started leaving the state. And you could see, feel that we that live here, we felt the, the, the fear um, that had enveloped the citizens because they were afraid of their life. Uh, so they couldn't come out to vote. But um, fortunately, um, two days before the election, IPOB withdrew their, 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 you know, their seat at home order and instructed their members, everyone, to go out to vote. And within that short window, period of time, people, um, you know, started sending information to their loved ones, you know, especially those in the rural communities that may not be able to have access to online information. So that actually triggered some, you know, some persons to come out to vote, especially this time around. And, um, we recorded very low turnout, which was very predictable. If you look at the history, historically, 
Uh, Panama State has always recorded very low turnout in an election. Uh, so, but this one was very um, unimaginable. We never, we we saw it coming. We knew that there would be low turnout of election um, um, voters, but we 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 also didn't know that it would turn out very peacefully. As you can see, we we didn't record any uh, much violence as a lot of people you know expected. So I would say there were mixed feelings from this point of view. So there were mixed feelings, expectations were mixed, but ultimately we had a very uh, great um, uh, exercise and everybody came out and people, few people that came out exercised their franchise without being hurt or without having anybody dead in the process. So that's what I can say for now on that. Okay, uh, l let's talk about uh, one of the factors, I mean, some of the issues that were raised mm -hmm. that would have influenced the conduct of the Anambra election, uh, of course, on the 6th. And one of them is uh, voter apathy, like you have actually mentioned. And if we look at history, antecedent, we'll find out that uh, the four elections over time, uh, voter apathy is like a norm in the elections. And this is actually not a surprise. Would there be anything or could we have avoided this voter apathy. Is there anything that could have been done to avoid it, uh, you know, to improve the participation of Anambra uh, persons in the elections? Yes, um, I wish you say, because um, in, the, in the build up to the election, um, some of us, especially the Teta movement, we went to the street, we went to the various communities in various local governments, started sensitizing people on the need to get their, 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 their PVC, on the need to register. We went to schools, you know, to high institutions. Uh, surprisingly, or um, interestingly, we found out that a lot of young people are not interested. Um, but that's a very sad development. Uh, we had over 80% uh, who would go into a class and ask how many students, how many persons, uh, you know, have a PVC. You would, you know, it would just be maybe two or three persons, and out of that, it could be just one person that would have a permanent uh, PVC. Uh, but the rest will just tell you they are not interested or they do not have. So there has there has there is this um, loss of interest in the system that is very popular among the, the people of the southeast, especially you know, with the government. So they've totally lost interest. They have totally, you know, disconnected, alienated themselves from the system. So, I think what should have happened, you know, uh, from the the political, um, uh, you know, candidates should have been a very intensive sensitization, reorientation of people. But it it seems like it it only happened within the uh, political parties, which is not enough. Uh, there are people who belong to political parties, and ordinarily. These are the people that are going to, you know, vote. Whether there is a seat at home, whether there is anything, they are going to come out and vote. Most of them, but ordinary citizens who do not belong to any political party, who have little or no interest in the electoral process, although they do not may not know actually that election is very important to everyone, not just the political uh, party members. They need to come out to vote. Who will govern them? Everybody. You know, uh, the citizens should be able to be, uh, uh, understand the importance of election. But I think that um, didn't happen because the, uh, the, the, the candidates didn't take it seriously. Because some of them, we are banking on the low voter turnout to, in order to manipulate the system. So I, should, I would say that, yes, there is a, um, that should have happened earlier. Because if we had enough education and sensitization of our people uh, who would have uh, resisted the, the narrative of no election. But it didn't happen, unfortunately. So um, it, like in 2017, something similar happened. Uh, no election campaign was the mantra. And at some point, it became very obvious that now, of course, it, everybody, many people knew there would be election, but it, it, it didn't turn out the way it turned out in 2021. Um, 2021 became more violent towards that the election. So that was why a lot of people felt it more and even had to leave the state because of the un unforeseen uh, event that could happen on the day of the election. So, but the, the thing I have to say is that, yes, we could have done better. The citizens of Anambra, the stakeholders, could have done better using different channels, engage the aggrieved uh, parties, engage everyone, citizens in the church, in markets, everywhere. But that didn't happen. All I'm right, Mr. Okoye, we're, we're going to come back to you. Um, okay. just, we'll come back to you um, to discuss further on, you know, the, the turnout and, of course, other issues 
Um, but I want to go to the election proper now, uh, where, um, uh, and uh, we're bringing in uh, Mr. Uh, Barrister Theo Mwibo, who is a legal practitioner. Uh, good morning, Barrister. Thanks for joining us. Barrister Mwibo, can you hear us? Yeah, good morning. <laughs> morning. Thanks for joining us. So I want to bring you in uh, to talk about the election proper and, um, you know, reactions to it. Um, aside, uh, first of all, INEC has declared uh, Iyala, local government area, didn't have any elections. And then second, the APC, it's in the Punch newspapers this morning, says Soludo sets to win, leads in 17 local government areas, and APC alleges rigging. So, uh, Bar uh, Barista Wingbo, let's, let's have you uh, step in on, on those um, main points. Well, um, I want to tell you that uh, I am worried about the 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 generation, the way our electoral process has been directed. Since I went to that uh uh board that uh very conclusive, they have done collateral damage to our electoral system. And I want to tell you that you can't progress without credible elections. And I, for one, I was imagining, I feel like it is the way how, or how I met with on the election in Amber State without taking, cutting the corners that were the, the system or the system, the nebulous system, the nebulous system of things from things to me, that has caused in here immense damage to our electoral system. So what is happening in Nala on or those uh, areas that they say that uh, they are yet to conclude? I wonder how big the number is. The number of is that they can't conduct the election. So all these they are mago mago to do has done immense damage to this country. That the people are now don't believe the in the election in Nigeria again. So. I want to tell you that that is completely It is the way and the method we use to teach those that the magic of the health nation, which is not good for our policy at all. It has done colossal damage to our significant power and concern. All right. Uh, let's look at some of the, um, you know, concerns why this election. I, I mean, we'll get back to you, uh, Mr. We'll get back to you, okay? But let's just stay because this is more like a follow-up uh, to this particular question. Now, you you have the fact that, um, according to Mrs. Ob, uh, she said that the Constitution provides for a candidate to secure both the highest number of vote casts, 25% of vote cast in at least two-thirds of the local government areas of the state to declare the winner. Now, all the quotas are saying that if you look at uh, Section 179 of the Constitution, that uh, you know Charles Saludo should have been declared the winner of the election. That's because he scored not less than one third of all vote cast in not less than two third of all the local government areas in the state. Uh, that's uh, two third of the 21 local government uh, in the state. What are your thoughts on that? Um, what are all these uh, mathematical configurations by INEC? I don't uh, wish you watch it at all. From all indications, all the very elements of this world, we know that Solito has won that election. I am not from Anambra State, but I'm deeply worried on how we direct everything. So uh, the configuration, or all the mathematical, uh, uh, um, uh, all the mathematical uh, intrigues. They want to apply or they apply in whatever way we look at it. The middle has met the uh, has met the requirement to be declared the winner of that election. What they want to do now is uh, whereby they frustrate the winner of an election. At the end of the day, they will push everything to the court, and in the court, we are those harbingers are waiting. They will be damaged finally and deprive the winner of that election. So, what I want to say personally, I am a lawyer and uh, I know how to interpret the constitution, I know how to interpret the electoral act. 
by all indication, they do not have one definition. So for people okay. to raise, they, they declare him good so that people will go, uh, will put it behind us. That every time we keep creating problems in this country, I want to tell you that I'm not happy what, uh, over all the things that are happening in this country. We were, in, about 30 years ago, we are the leader. We are the flagship of the African continent. But today, we are a pariah to the like it or not. As a result of the insincerity and the honesty of the people at the head of affairs, they do things without knowing that what they did. Because I have to tell you that there is no way we cannot move an inch with all this type of system we are talking so when they say um, uh, to come uh, to uh, to sort of this, what sort of this, this and that is all jargon. This man has won this election. Let him declare. All right, hold on, Barisa, we will. Um, Mr. Okoye, let's come back to you now. You know, also to share your thoughts on uh, this uh, angle, and of course, the APC alleging rigging uh, in the elections. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Well, uh, what I have to say is that in every contest, uh, there will always be a loser and a winner. And um, in most cases, the loser, you know, usually complain of um, injustice and um, or whatnot. But in this election, I must say, of course, there were so many irregularities. Uh, they started with INEC um, not coming to poll units uh, on time, INEC ad hoc staffs. And uh, they recorded uh, that they recorded the problem in Ihiala. I think Ihiala had a very um, uh, peculiar issue where the security, uh, you know, security men didn't uh, they didn't mobilize because according to them they were being old. So it affected the the local government as a whole. So um, I don't know how what led to that, but that really stalled that election. And in order, in some places, in some polling units and wards, election didn't hold at all because of not just the low turnouts, but because of the the malfunction of the uh, electronics, um, the the electronics from my neck. So it was unable to capture people, the voters. So it's contributed to some of the problem we are having now. And I think my neck it needs to upgrade or they need to step up because this is this has becoming a, it has become a recovery decimal where every time every now and then we go to the pool we have one or two issues coming from the same you know i neck they should be able to fix up and forestall this for future you know occurrence um of course they, they reserve the right to to you know add their opinion but i have to say that uh, they don't really have anything to 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 fight for because Anambra states, um, Anambra state people generally do not uh, like I APC. They do, they do not um, have any attachment to APC. I am not a member of any political party for a record, but from the fillers on ground, I do not think APC stand a chance in this election. Um, however, they they still reserve the right to you know to question some of the outcomes. So that's what I have to say there. But in all, if you look at it, the local governments in Inewi was won by YPP, not even APC. So it means that APC does not even have a stronghold. They've not won any single local government. The PDP won in Obaru, Why APGA uh, you know, won in all the other local governments outside the local government. So it's going to be an interesting outcome. But I, we in Anambra states, um, we are very confident that this will not turn out the way the emo situation turned out so it's not something that we are afraid of we are ready um, we are set to to you know to guide our and save our votes okay all right uh, let's come to you uh, mr theo Weibo. uh do you also agree that um, the elections as the apc is alleging as were rigged in anambra state i mean when you begin to look at uh, the dominance of abga in anambra state they have been in power for 16 years amongst other issues when you make a comprehensive analysis of the results so far collected from unit to unit and so on it is a clear cut victory for the region. So uh, I want to tell you that uh, I am not uh, comforted all these uh, issues that have been uh, trumped up. Now, when you check or when you look at the looking pattern, 
you see a small one right here. You see, you see all the leaves and stones of the uh, Anambra State. So I don't know why we should not conduct an election that would be ranked for free. Where the winner will be announced. But, and I don't know why most Nigerians, when they participate in an election, they don't know how to compare the people. Because they want to make problems. They want to cause the government down. I mean, the, 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 they want to rock the force of the government. Right? Because when they do all these amendments, they will try people, try uh, um, officials. For our economy. It's a simple something that would have conducted the winners here and the company. And at the after proper time, our appointed time, he will be sworn in and the person will go to work immediately. So, all these instructions, I am uncomfortable with them. I'm not, and I've been in this right even for more than two, three decades. At the time I stopped talking, but the more you talk, the more we want a better society. Why we have the security challenges we have in the state here? When you impose people uh, against the wish of the majority of the citizens of the country, it's a franchisement, is a very big thing before God. Where people will say, see, see, look at the candidate you want and impose. Because corrupt, corruption is very rife in this country. I am, I am telling you that, I will tell you in my mind that. What they are doing is to deprive that man of his success. Look at what happened in uh, Imo State, where the person that came forth was declared the, uh, the governor. Look at what happened in Imo North, too. When two candidates were disqualified at the eve of the election, yet at the end of the day, those disqualified, one of them is disqualified. I mean, this is not good for us, it's not good for the system. Uh, I don't know what, I don't know what else to say. That to say that as far as this Anambra election is concerned, whatever angle they want to take it. So okay, um, um, I'm bringing back um, Mr. Ocho Okoye. Um, one thing that I've seen uh, mentioned a few times is the disparity between the number of, and I've seen a lot of people mention this, I'm not sure why, the number of people who voted in the primaries for, you know, the APC candidates and, you know, where those numbers seem to have, you know, disappeared into. Um, and I'm asking this, you know, because of what you mentioned earlier, as some of the reasons behind the low voter turnout um, in um, Anambra State. Uh, would you say that this is, you know, the same reason um, that things have turned out this way? Um, if you had 230,000 people vote in the APC primaries uh, for one candidate, um, you know, it's, it, those numbers don't seem to be reflected now in the election. So is this because of the voter apathy or is there something else that we're missing here? <laughs> Quite ridiculous. I, I, I'm privy to that information. Uh, currently, the APC is still in the courts. They're supposed to actually uh, sit for that before the election, but I, I don't really know what happened and that seems to have been post, uh, postponed. Um, Morgalo, George Morgalo, who you know, who also contested under APC, was very. Um, he contested that election that produced the uh, Angel Bad. That was a very ridiculous outcome, because we all know that um, APC does not have structure in a number of states. Uh, before now, even if they do have, uh, it's not as much as that. I, I mean, if you have party members with that figure, how many? Number did uh, hope they are not using winning election in 2017. Um, the last time we had election, the voluntary election in a number of states. So the number is outrageous, is uh, ridiculous, it is not real. And that puts a very big question mark on whether they truly had primary election 
you know, in APC, because um, that cannot, uh, the, I, I don't think there are over 300,000 APC members in Anambra State. So that figure was um, obviously misleading. And you could see from the election, um, of course, towards the election, um, we could see that the, the, the figure is, was actually misleading. Again, um, the, the, the reason why we had no voter turnout, I have explained it earlier in my speech. And I said, the, because of the fear, there was a, a, a insecurity in Anambra State to, to, uh, during the build up to the election that even made some of the candidates went as far as going to Lagos to, um, to campaign. And it was really that bad because it affected the, the, the confidence and the, the atmosphere of the, you know, of Anambra State. A lot of people left the state as a result. People called their loved ones and warned them not to step out as a result of that. Um, the IPOB made that instruction, you know, that they will sit at home from the fifth, that nobody should come out. And from, uh, from records, it's, uh, it has always been clear that each time IPOB make such instruction, um, they always ensure that they, they, that, um, they implement it. So people feel that it could actually be the same. And about two days before the election, they called it off. However, the information didn't trickle down to the masses, especially people in the rural communities and suburbans and other places as well. However, um, the few people that got you know, uh, the information turned up during the election. And like I said, the party members, party faithful, for example, party like APGA has a very strong uh, soldiers. In, they are on ground. They have been here for over close to uh, uh, 16 years. And what that means is that they are very um, grassly rooted in the politics. So they, they have full soldiers that will always come out to vote for them, will always come out to support them. PDP has always been here as well. Um, APC recently you know, emerged and has, always, um, has only emerged, it only comes when there is um, an election. So I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't ascribe to that to, the, the, um, to any other thing but the insecurity, right? Oh. The insecurity is the only thing that led to the, the, the low voter turnout. And of course, the, the order made by IPO. All right, I'll sit with you, uh, Mr. Koye. Uh, inconclusive elections been described as a product of our weak electoral process. And this is the case with um, Anambra elections, not the first in Nigeria. Uh, we've witnessed that in Plateau State, uh, Kanu, amongst others. Do you think that this is the case? Do you agree with the school of thought? We have a way of repeating our mistakes. And the reason is because, um, as a country, we are not in an intelligent nation. Um, there is nothing you would tell me that that INEC has corrected from what happened in the Kano and the other places before the Anambra state election. I'm sure they must have witnessed this a similar situation. And, and right now, they are witnessing this. I strongly uh, believe that they will not do anything tangible about it. So it has become our norm. You know, we pay less attention to some of these things, and it always embarrasses us. So I would say that uh, it is part of the, the problem we have in the system. Where I voted, my polling unit, we had a very smooth ride. The election was free, um, was, it, was, it was beautiful. But other polling units complained of the, the, the machine capturing, so it was a problem. Um, so, but what I would say really is that it's generally the problem of Nigeria, uh, the incompetence in the high places, and our our non-talent attitude towards um, um, problem solving. So we we literally don't see some of these things as an issue right now. They see it as well. It's a normal way of um, election, inconclusive election. So they will, you know, they will go back and still repeat the same thing again. So, but I I pray that um, I pray for INEC to to turn a new leaf. There is a new electoral law. I, I hope that the, the president of the country signs that into law so that they were able to transmit election electronically. Um, luckily, the, most of the, uh, uh, the results from different polling units are available on their platform. So if you check my um, neck platform, if you log in, you're able to assess all the, uh, the results from different polling units. Um, and that is a work on development. However, 
they should also uh, move ahead in making sure that they have alternative, for example, alternative um, source of uh, network in case one is not available enough, then the other should be able to step up. All right. Uh, we'll have to wrap up here. Um, Uche Okoye, thank you so much for your time uh, you for this Monday me. morning. Thanks for speaking with us. We'll look forward to, to having another conversation with you as uh, soon as possible. And uh, thank you. Barrister Theo Wingbo, thank you also for your time and for speaking with us this Monday morning. My pleasure, my pleasure. All right. We'll take a short break. And when we come back, we're moving from Anambra to Kaduna State, where there seems to be crisis brewing over land and uh, government's demolition of properties. We'll talk about it when we come back. Stay with us. Thank you.